Hi folks, it's Richard from Inclusive Driving. Not every driving test ends in a pass. The national pass rate is only about 45%. And as an instructor, I get fails too. Now, it may seem odd that I'm uploading the dash cam footage from a failed test. But if you think about it, this is a far better learning opportunity than watching a video where everything is perfect. During driving lessons, we teach skills which we hope can be transferred to other similar situations. And as it's not really possible to expose a learner to every single possible scenario that they might encounter in the future, we do have to hope that the set of skills we teach will be applied when necessary. In this video, we look at where maybe those skills weren't applied in what might have been an unusual circumstance. There's no audio on this as it's not permitted to record sound during a driving test, but I'll add some commentary over the top to point out the mistakes and where things went wrong. So there was some hesitation there. We did say cargo pass, so Jenny was right to give way. But then after that, I think we could have kept the car creeping while we just had a second look rather than staying still for so long. The sat nav has asked Jenny to turn left at the next roundabout. I think the roundabout takes her by surprise, even though there is a warning sign for it on the left. It says slow in the road. Here's the warning sign on the left. I felt that the braking for the roundabout was a little severe. But we made good progress and didn't stop unnecessarily. And now Jen is being asked to pull up on the left in a safe place. Now at the mini roundabout that's coming up, Jenny gets her first serious fault. This was marked under hesitation. The van in front of us goes into the left lane. We are going straight on, so we need the right lane. So there's no real reason why we couldn't have proceeded alongside the van here. As you can see, there's a vehicle behind. Now here, Jenny mixes up priorities and for some reason gives way to the traffic on the left. Again, causing a hold up behind us. So that was the first serious fault, hesitation. I think it was down to misunderstanding the roundabout priorities. I'll put a link in the top corner of the screen to another video that explains how to use mini roundabouts.
Now, GPS recordings of speed are usually considered more accurate than the car's own speedometer. So we are doing a decent speed along here. When the camera says you're doing about 25, the display in the car is reading probably about 28 or 29. Okay, so we were doing a good speed along here. And we're turning left here. And that was well handled. That was a nice progressive move around the corner. Quite safe. And Jenny's now asked to pull up on the left so that the examiner can see her carry out a hill start. The sat-nav has now asked Jenny to take the next road on the right and this is where we pick up a second serious fault. Jenny starts to turn far too early and is looking like she's going to go onto the wrong side of the road. We need to go past the double dotted line and enter into this single dotted line. So that was a second serious fault for cutting the corner. Next, Jenny was asked to pull up on the left, about a car length away from the white car. And this is called an angled start. So that the examiner can see that you can move off from behind another vehicle with the correct observations and full safety. He also reminds Jenny that Satnav has asked her to take the second turning on the right. And I think on that one, I think the right turn was a little bit too late. Possibly Jenny was overthinking the mistake that had happened before because the examiner did make her aware of it. So maybe that's why she steered a little too late for that one. We're now asked to go ahead second exit on this roundabout. Again, good progress made there. No unnecessary stopping. That was a good approach speed. You should be quite proud of that one. And at the end of this road, Satnav asks us to turn left. 
And as you'll see, it is a mini roundabout. Left first exit. So possibly we could have emerged before the white van, but I wouldn't call that major hesitation. So not the end of the world there. And Satnav asks us to go ahead first exit on this roundabout. It's difficult to see what's coming from the right here. So slowing down is absolutely the right thing to do. And that approach speed and progress was absolutely perfect. There's a little bit of straight line driving now until we come to another roundabout where Satnav asks us to go ahead, second exit. There's often lots of parked cars along this road on the opposite side of the road. I think the current speed is good. Here's a warning sign for the roundabout. Remember warning signs are usually for things that we can't yet see. And we're going ahead, second exit. Some nice anticipation on the braking there so that we didn't get too close to the red car. That's a good approach speed. And nice progress through the roundabout. Satnav has now asked us to turn left at the next roundabout. That's a good distance from the red car again. Tyres and tarmac, well done. I feel if we know we're turning left at the roundabout, I feel our position could be more to the left, more like the white van's position is rather than the red car. But that position is now sorted out. And excellent progress onto that roundabout, a very safe emerge at a sensible speed. This roundabout is ahead second exit. A very sensible distance from the white van. Well done there. And a fantastic progress onto the roundabout. Again, a good approach speed. At the roundabout we're coming up to now, Satnav is asking us to go ahead and that's the second exit. 
Now, you'll have to use a little bit of imagination here because there's no in-car audio. Um, but I was sitting in the back of this test, so I can tell you what happened. Um, Jenny put on her left signal on approach to this roundabout, yet she was taking the second exit. So that's potentially misleading anybody who's waiting to come out of the first exit. And the examiner did ask Jenny to turn the signal off. And a good emerge onto the roundabout. The more confident drivers, they were able to emerge before Jenny. I don't think there was undue hesitation there. We're now being asked to uh, take the left turn at the second set of traffic lights. And Jenny does really well uh, getting to the end of the bus lane and then moving over to the left. So well done there. The move over to the left could maybe have been a little bit earlier, but there was no one behind, so there was no risk of being blocked off. As you often find at traffic lights with a left filter arrow, there's a give way line just after the traffic lights. I feel that Jenny could have checked and observed on the move here. I think we could have looked here rather than coming almost to this complete stop. Uh, again, not the end of the world, but I think we could have maybe done that a little a little slicker, that's the word I'm going to use, or a little more fluent. And that was excellent anticipation of the lorry pulling in front of you. Uh, good reduction in speed there without being over the top. Well done. Uh, just a very small point. I can't see it raining anymore, so perhaps we could turn the windscreen wipers off. That's nothing to do with the outcome of a driving test, though. Again, a good distance be 
behind the blue car, you've left tyres and tarmac. Well done. And note here how Jenny recognises that the car was turning right in front of her and she was able to plan and move round on the left hand side. It is perfectly OK to pass somebody on the left if they are turning right. And that point will become very relevant in a few moments. Satnav has asked us to go left first exit on this mini roundabout. And I don't think we needed to slow this much. We can see both of the roads leading on to the roundabout. I think we could see that was clear. I think we could have done that without slowing so much. We could have been more fluent there. Satnav asks us to go ahead at these traffic lights. And we can see Jenny was slowing nice and early. As soon as she saw the amber traffic light come on, she checked behind and came off the accelerator. Well done there. In a moment, we'll be approaching another roundabout where we will be turning right, third exit. Now, Jenny is in the habit of counting the exits on roundabout, counting them out loud, which is something I support. I do feel though that those exits need to be counted on approach to the roundabout while we are moving or while we are braking rather than coming to an almost stop at the roundabout and then counting them. We can see from the green sign approximately where the third exit is. Again, I don't feel it was necessary to slow that much. Now, remember what we said about the car in front of Jenny signalling to turn right? Well, something very similar happens to here, happens here. Now, the car in front signals right, but this time Jenny doesn't pass it on the left. Jenny waits behind that car. Now there was a serious fault here because we stopped behind the right turning car when maybe there was room on the left. That wasn't the serious fault. The serious fault was that when the car in front cleared, Jenny started moving but didn't check mirrors. So was unaware of traffic who was passing her on the left. So there was the fourth serious fault for using mirrors when changing speed. So 
So by this time, Satnav had finished and the examiner was giving directions verbally. And the instruction was to go ahead, third exit towards Canuck. We've spotted the traffic lights nice and early and begun to, begun to slow down. Well done. Again, here, we really need to be thinking about the location of the exit on approach rather than slowing down to count them. We want to really count them as we go around the roundabout. but the emerge and the positioning on this roundabout was really good. It's very easy on this roundabout to drift over into the right hand lane without realizing it. So Jenny held her position really well there. And the next instruction is for a left turn. So the approach to this was really good. Uh, mirrors were checked. The signal was well timed. You obviously can't hear it on the video. And the braking was perfectly timed there. That was a fantastic left turn. The next instruction is to continue ahead at the mini roundabout. This mini roundabout is really tricky. It's the sort of junction that used to be a T-junction and has been turned into a mini roundabout for traffic calming reasons. There's not a lot of space around the white circle. So Jenny does a brilliant job. She slows down appropriately here. That was fantastic. And here we have another pull up on the left. And the next instruction is to turn right, second exit on the mini roundabout. And here I feel that Jenny was giving way to traffic on the left rather than giving way to traffic on the right. Now, even if you look at the traffic on the left and feel that they might break the rules and go before you, we can still proceed slowly. And if we're proceeding slowly and that car still pulls out, we can stop. But you'll find the fact that we are moving tells the car on the left that they need to wait. But that doesn't happen here. So 
so there was an opportunity to go there but Jenny missed it and I think that was because we were giving way to the white car unnecessarily. There's another roundabout coming up and we're turning right and it's the second exit. And this one was pretty good. I feel it could have been more fluent. I think we could have approached a little quicker, not slowing quite as much as this. It's a very open view. We can see quite clearly that there is nothing. And again, maybe we're giving way to the wrong side. Just not sure what was in Jenny's head there. And then we're pretty much on the home run. This is the road that takes you back to the test centre. And it's a 30 mile an hour road. Jenny's doing 30. So very appropriate there. We're coming into the section where it changes from 30 miles an hour to national speed limit. And I think Jenny's speed is still quite appropriate. Although it becomes national speed limit, this road is very narrow. You'll notice that the center line disappears. That tells me that it's not really wide enough for a left and a right side. Um, so I feel the speed is appropriate especially with a car coming on. The centre line appears again now, telling us that the road is slightly wider and you can see Jenny has picked up the speed again now. And she has been instructed to take the second turning on the right. So I think it's perfectly appropriate that we don't speed up anymore. Now turning back into the test centre, again I feel there was undue hesitation here. So we have a clear opportunity after this white car. Let's time it. So undue hesitation there, I feel. And then we finish with a reverse park. I'm not going to put this bit on the video because I don't want to be filming on test centre premises. Um, but suffice to say, this reverse park was carried out perfectly. So overall, four serious faults, which of course is disappointing, but we can learn from those. So I hope that's been useful to you and I'll see you on another video very soon.